and welcome to Lesson 1 of Personal Finance, in which you will be introduced to some of the more basic topics that will help you build a foundation for what we will be going over in the future. So to begin with, we have the fundamental uh, definition of personal finance, and to put in basic terms, it's how a person or group of people decide uh, how they want to handle their money in order to achieve their own personal goals, which can vary from person to person. And personal finance might seem complex, but it involves both simple and complex things. For example, it can be as simple as deciding whether or not you should buy a new shirt and as complex as deciding how and when you're going to buy a new house. Personal finance can be broken down into the uh, topics of needs and wants. A need is something that you require to live and survive, as opposed to a want, which is something you want for leisure or something you really don't require to live. So let's look at some examples here. Three of the most basic needs which everyone considers uh, in their day-to-day -day life would be food, water, and shelter. And some wants, uh, the examples given here are video games and watches. The wants vary from person to person, but typically the needs stay the same. And in order to succeed in personal finance, you have to find the correct balance between needs and wants. And yes, needs and wants should determine your decisions in personal finance, whether in the short run or in the long run. Let's see here how uh, short run and long run actually looks. In the short run, you can see food uh, and a new washing machine for the needs and a book and a new console for the wants. And in the long run, it's a house and comfortable retirement. Now, you can tell that these are two very different uh, scenarios, but you should really be considering how this affects you personally whenever you make the decisions of which, which to buy and which not to. And in the end, each person's needs and wants always are going to differ, uh, but you should always try and use personal finance to make the correct decisions and get wherever you want to go in the future. Another important concept in personal finance is that of risk. Uh, usually it does involve risk, but not always. And basically risk is a decision which can hurt or help you financially. Uh, it might seem like an interesting, uh, more complex topic, but it's as simple as investing in a company or even just having a credit card. And typically the relationship you'll have in personal finance is that the higher the risk, the higher the potential reward you're going to obtain from that risk. So let's look at the relationship graph here. As you can see, the higher the, the uh, line goes, uh, in the higher the risk and the higher the reward. Uh, you're going to see in a little bit how making a smart decision and, and taking a smart risk can affect how this relationship looks. Risk might seem like a uh, dangerous word, but it does help you improve yourself, and it does help you achieve goals that you'll set for yourself faster. The best way to succeed is to take risks. With personal finance, you can minimize the need for risk, but a lot of people do this. They embrace risk in order to make themselves more successful. So now we're going to learn about smart risks, which I mentioned before. Um, but it's very important to learn what smart risks are and how to recognize them. Uh, smart risks are basically risks that you take, which you can tell have little downsides if you do not succeed in that risk. And making sure that you take smart risks will actually help, help you stay financially stable and successful. So let's look at uh, the relationship when we take smart risks. All right, so look at the graph now that we have considered a smart risk. As you can see, the line actually goes upward, which means that for the same amount of risk, you can obtain a higher potential reward. Uh, look at how the line, the dotted line, basically shows that it's lower risk for higher reward. You should always be trying to consider which decision in life will be a smart risk that will basically allow for a higher potential reward. So now this is what it all comes down to. Think of your financial goals in the next year, 10 years, and even 50 years. You have to consider your personal wants and needs when making this decision. The earlier you start thinking about your own goals, the earlier you can start working on them, and the faster you can succeed at getting to those goals. In this class, we'll be looking at what kind of affects your goals, and uh, these are some of the topics we'll go over. A lot of important ones, income and savings and debt, 
all will play into your personal finance experience and your goals in the long term. Thank you.